So we're talking about log linear models as an extension of chi-square test of independence, otherwise known as cross-tabs analysis. To remind you how it goes here is an experiment done on French skiers. Okay, so it seems like how this experiment was set up is to see whether vitamin C helps to prevent cold. So the treatment is two, vitamin C and placebo. And then these are the counts at the end of the experiment. So 17 people took vitamin C and the outcome was they had a cold, for example. Of the total number of people, 139 took vitamin C, 109 did not. And of all the people who had a cold, that was 48, split 17 and 31. Now when we run the cross tabs analysis, the basic one that we learn in college, the, remember the null hypothesis is there is no relationship or no association between the two factors here being treatment and outcome. Now looking at the data here, you would see su suggest that there is a relationship between the treatment and outcome. More than half the people who had a cold were a placebo group and more than half the people who did not have a cold had vitamin C. Okay, saying that is rather vague, so then we are taught, some of us, to report the odds and the odds ratio. So I'm going to just do that here, a review here, because all this leads into log linear models. Okay, so remember what odds is. Odds of something is that probability of that thing divided by probability of not that thing. So if we are interested here, the odds of a cold, given it's got vitamin C, that would be 7, we can t do it in numbers, 17 divided by 122, two, because under vitamin C, 17 had a cold, 122 did not have a cold. So we simply do 17 over 122, two, which is about 0.139. Since this odds is less than 1, it's telling us that the chance of getting a cold is smaller than the chance of not, not getting a cold. We can do the same for the placebo group to calculate the odds of a cold, and that will be 31 divided by 109. Okay, now comparing these two odds, you can see that the odds of a cold given the vitamin C is around half the size of that for the placebo group, comparing 0.139 to about 0.28. What I've just talked about there is actually the odds ratio. So the odds ratio of a cold, of vitamin C versus the placebo, is the odds of the cold given vitamin C divided by the other odds. And it comes to about 0.49, okay, about half. So what this number tells us is that the odds of a getting a cold given the vitamin C group is about half that of getting a cold given you've taken a placebo. Okay, so you're saying, well, what's this got to do with log linear? The log linear model is going to be great where there are associations because you'll be able to use the coefficients on the model to tell us about odds ratios. And thus, gives us a measure of the strength of relationships between the two factors. Now, when we fit this log linear model, it's very similar to the tr treatment of ANOVA as a regression, so it involves main effects and interaction terms. So I'm just going to continue as if you've seen that treatment. If you haven't, you can still try to follow along. So when there's two-way table, two standing for two factors, so here we've got uh, treatment and uh, outcome, we've got two possible models. We've got something called the additive model, which is just the model of main effects. That's a model of no association between the two factors versus what they call a saturated model. That's the model with all the main effects and the interaction terms. Uh, for the two-way model, this would coincide with a model of association. So we're going to run each of these two models, interpreting the parameters and using the models for prediction of the counts, um, because that's what log linear models are useful for. So for predicting the counts in each cell, and also for interpreting the parameters, which may be log uh, odds or odds ratios. And then finally, we're going to look at a test to determine for this model, do we go for the additive or the saturated model? That's equivalent to saying, do we go for 
a null of no association or association. Okay, so first of all, let's fit the additive, so-called additive model. Here you can see the SPSS, and you can you can pretty much follow along and uh, put in the data just like this. Uh, this is how I've coded it. Okay, so to run it, we'll go analyze, log linear, general. Then I move the conditions over into factor box. Beforehand, because of the structure of my data is aggregated, I would have weighted cases. So to remember how you do that, you go to data, weight, you're not going to be able to see this, okay, weight, and then you just move the counts, which is the numbers, into the frequency variable box. I've done that already, so you can see it's there. Okay, now here, first of all, you can see that distribution of cell counts, Poisson multinomial, um, you could just leave them Poisson because they mean the same thing for our example. This is just about how uh, how was the um, experiment set up. Uh, more important for us is we want to go to model, we're going to go to custom, and we are going to select these two, and you can see here building terms, if I just show you, you see you've got main effects, two-way, three-way, four-way, five, so we've got SPSS to, to five-way, that's, you know, most people don't even need that. Alright, so main effects, and we'll continue, that takes us those into the box there, and then I just hit save, right? I don't want to save anything. Uh, sorry, I mean options. I don't want the design matrix. I want the estimates because I want the parameter estimates. And make sure all this stuff is unchecked, otherwise, you'll be dumped with lots of SPSS junk. And then we hit OK and pray. OK, I still get a lot of junk, but I want to focus on the parameter estimate. So, first of all, you know, what is the use of a model? I'm going to use it for prediction, predicting the cell counts, and parameter interpretation. Okay, first of all, look at what it's done. Um, it's used this what's called a cell referencing method to ensure we don't have multicollinearity. So treatment that was like co cold and sorry treatment was vitamin C and placebo, and it's used set one of those to be the reference category, so it set it to zero. Okay, and for condition one and two, it set one of them to be zero as well. In fact, what SPSS does is whatever the, is the highest number, whatever's been coded the higher number, uh, it sets that level to be the reference group. So here, SPSS speak, I've coded co cold as one and no cold as two, so that is the reference category. And in treatment, I've coded one for vitamin C and two, so that will be my reference for treatment. Right, so just to show you how I can use this model for prediction, so based on that model, if the model were any good, let's see what it would predict for outcome cold and treatment vitamin C, in other words, where they both coded one. The true the, ob, the true value, well, true value, observed value in my sample is 70. Okay, so what you do is you take these estimates, okay, I take the constant, 4.753, I'm treatment 1, and treatment 1 takes the value minus 0 0.007, and then I'm in condition 1 as well, minus 1.571. Okay, and then what is that value? Okay, it's that. What you do with this one is you take the e of it, exponential, exponential of it, e th exponential 3.175. Okay, and that gives me around 24, so it's predicting 24 versus the true, true, the sample value is 17, so it's a bit off. But here we're not saying anything about the. F that's a different question to whether this model is any is is can be improved upon. We're just literally looking at these estimates here. Okay, let's just do one more so prediction. Let's say treatment is two and condition two. That corresponds to treat, uh, placebo and no cold. So what does this model predict for number of people? in my sample of 279 with no cold and placebo. Well, we put that constant in, 4.753. That now is not in the model, so it's zero. That's zero, because we're here, we need this one, and we need this one, that's zero as well. So we just take, that means the first step is already straight away 4.753 and then we just take the exponential of it, exponent of it, 
4.753 one, about 116 and we see here that it's actually about more like 109 okay next I want to look at the, um, the the main effects here click that one and that one okay minus 0 0.007 for the additive model, these are the log odds of that thing. So here, if we take exponent of that, this is the odds of vitamin C, and importantly, that this odds is the same irrespective of the level of your outcome, cold or no cold. Uh, since the value is basically 1, it's just saying that there is no difference in the odds of, uh, sorry, no difference in the chance of uh, taking vitamin C or not per group, per, per level of um, response. Cold and no. Okay, I have to slow down when I'm doing this thing because, you know, you make one slip, it's out of your mouth, and then, oh my god, you have to retract. So I have to go very carefully here. Right, let's look at this minus 1.571. So we do the same thing. Okay, the condition 1 corresponds in the code to cold. So this is the odds of of a, of a cold, outcome being a cold. And this will be the same irrespective of whether you have vitamin C or placebo from this additive model. Anyway, this number is closer to 0 than it is to 1, so it's telling us that the um, chance of getting a cold is a lot less than not getting a cold. Okay guys, that's the additive model. Now we're going to move on to the saturated model. That's where we're going to have the main effects and all interactions. Now there's only going to be one interaction term here and that's between the two factors. And to fit it, we go analyze, log linear, general, same as before. This time we go and hit model and you can see it's saturated. So I hit that saturated and OK. And here again. All right, here's the parameter estimates. There's a lot more now. You see, all this group is due to the interactions. That's different um, combinations, different levels of each factor multiplied together. And there are four of them because there are two levels of each factor. So we'll just do the same thing, um, prediction, and then and then we'll talk about the uh, parameter estimates interpret. So first step, what we do is we add together these estimates that correspond to the cell 1 and 1. So we've got condition 1, that's what we want, we'll add that to the constant. Treatment 1, we add that on as well. Right, condition, this is the interaction, condition times interaction with treatment both at level 1. Okay, that's that, so we'll add that on. Okay, so we've got them all. Exponent of that. Okay, that's about 17 and a half. Okay, so it's between 17 anyway, 17 or 18. And it's 17. In fact, due to rounding errors, what that should come to is actually 17 exactly. The saturated model always gives the exact gives the exact uh, cell counts. Okay, if you if you're very sh sharp at this point, you'll be thinking to yourself, well, why don't you just fit the saturated model all the time? Fact is that the saturated mo written model, sorry, is no good because it's um, basically has the same number of parameters as you have observations. In other words, set each observation to a parameter value. That in simple linear regression where you've got an X and Y is like just joining up all the dots. Of course, you're going to get a best fit because the, then that will ensure that the line goes for every single dot. Kinda, sorta. Okay. The mo more in interesting thing when we come to these log linear models is the interpretation of the interaction terms. The interaction terms tell us about the association relationship between the two variables and in bigger tables it will tell us about the association between each pair of two variables conditioned on some other variables. Okay, so this interaction we've got an estimate of minus 0.7. To interpret it, it's important to note what the reference is here. The reference is placebo no cold. If we take the ex of this that gives us the odds ratio not the odds 
the odds ratio. But the odds ratio of what? Okay, one one stands for vitamin C cold group. Okay, one one, and this is like comparing it with. Okay, forget that. So it's one one. It's the cold and vitamin C group. So it could be interpreted as follows: It's the odd ratio of cold given vitamin C versus placebo, or it could be interpreted as the odds ratio of having taken vitamin C given cold versus that you don't get a cold. Now only one of those statements make more sense for, an, for a person carrying out this experiment and it's the first one. So we need to take this minus 0.7 and take the exponent of it. Okay now we've got about it's about a half. So we can make the sentence as follows. The odds ratio of the outcome being a cold given the vitamin C group uh, versus the placebo group or let's make it make more sense here saying that is like saying the odds of a cold given that you've taken the vitamin C is about half that of the odds of getting a cold when you had the placebo guys now think right back to the start when I did the review about the odds ratios what did we see here the odds ratio of a cold vitamin C versus placebo is that number and that's not surprising because the saturated model there's only two possible models when you've got two way table additive and the saturated the saturated model is like a model of perfect fit but it's useless because the number of parameters equals the number of observations so you got zero degrees of freedom uh, forget I said zero degree of freedom it just makes things sound more complicated than they need to right okay so working through my we've talked about now the additive and the saturated model all that remains now is to say okay which model is better here additive or saturated and this is where we do a test we go back to the additive model and we look at the goodness of fit test there's two likelihood ratio Pearson's chi-square now this Pearson chi-square 4.811 is actually the usual cross tabs that you guys learn to do okay for the additive model for either of these tests testing the same thing the null hypothesis is and remember this is always the case for two-way tables the null is that the odd additive model uh, provides adequate fit that's the same as saying the two variables are independent additive is the same as saying independence or should I say the additive model is the same as saying that the variables are independent versus the alternative that we should have a saturated model and the saturated model corresponds to the model where the two variables are associated okay guys it doesn't matter which two you use here similar values here in a similar significance level so we look at it either one let's look at the likelihood ratio the p-value is 0.027 that's smaller than 0.05 five percent significance so we reject the null so we reject at the five percent significance level we reject the null of this additive model in favor of the interaction model i.e. the model with the uh, model with the yeah the interaction i.e. the saturated model and so what you would do then is go to the interaction model and just report the uh, the odds ratio that's what you do okay because if you think now at cross tabs when you first do su um, such a such a thing you you if you conclude that it's association some of you a lot of you just I think well I don't know how many you stop and just say oh that is association between my two attributes a and b and then the press professor might then push you to say okay what kind of um, relationship are they here look at your table of the numbers of the cell counts and make some sense of it and this is when you report something like the odds ratio I just presented earlier on okay I've reached nearly the end and I hope without any wobbles okay where next okay where next guys it leads us to naturally to three-way tables and that's the really more fascinating thing because then we can have all types of, uh, well I say all types, we have many more types of um, associations between two variables or I could put, rephrase that as uh, different types of independent you know when you do cross tabs and this is important uh, when you do cross tabs um, it may not be mentioned to you when you're doing cross tabs of two variables 
that if you reject the null of no relationship in favor of the alternative that is a relationship guys it doesn't actually mean that the relationship is meaningful this is kind of similar to the situation of spurious regression you know you find some regression between two quantitative variables many correlations mean nothing and it'll be the same with when you're doing the cross tabs many such associations that you find will be meaningless what they call spurious because they can be explained away by some other factor or there could be something else going on there and that's what this log linear model can help us unravel it can help us help help tell us about the type of um, associations there are It'd be like uh, what we call mutual independence in this model it's the same as the additive model it could be that we find conditional kind of independence that's like same as when you do a three variable cross tabs and then you find that the relationship disappears when first when you did two variables there appeared to be a relationship that's uh, consistent with like a uh, spurious regression when you're dealing with quantitative variable or you could have like joint independence or you could have homogeneous association so all those things we could talk more about if I ever do this video on three-way tables uh, the other thing to say guys is that um, in this example I, didn't s I just said they're categorical we just treated uh, these treatment and outcome as categorical and nominal variables they're nominal but um, note that there are methods for log linear where if we have variables that are on the ordinal scale okay but since the two way by two way table here it doesn't really matter and then more advanced is not for newbies really is like going on to, to repeated measures as well as dependencies between the frequencies across the levels okay and to finish off I really feel like I should be doing some eating or drinking stunt I've got a cup of tea here half full maybe I can drink all that in less than five seconds what do you think okay well okay I'm shutting off and here I go bye <laughs>